Hi, Amy. How are you doing? Hi, sir. I'm good. How are you? Good, good. <clears throat> so, okay, Amy, welcome to this session on uh, rate of change. We began with learning about uh, some prerequisites for calculus. In that, we learned about rate of change. During our last session, we felt a need that, you know, how to sketch a graph of a gradient from the graph of a function was kind of critical, right? Mm -hmm. So in this video, we'll discuss exactly what should be the steps followed to sketch the graph of a gradient from the graph of the function. Remember, gradient is a function itself. So once you get the gradient, you can again sketch a graph of its gradient. So we can have gradient of the, after the gradient, and it finds very important application, especially when you take up examples based on displacement, velocity, and acceleration, because all the three are connected. Velocity is rate of change of displacement. Acceleration is rate of change of velocity. So many times, even in your GCSE exam, there will be questions based on these three uh, physical quantities, which are related with gradient. And there, some questions need to be answered by sketching the graph. And therefore, this video is not only important for as a base to calculus, but as such in general, a very important video. So to give you more details on this, uh, I have made some notes and I'll share my screen with you. And uh, then we'll see how it goes. Uh, <clears throat> Can you see this screen, right? Yeah. Okay, so we'll begin from here. We're talking about the extended part of our calculus. Normally it is not there in the curriculum. We do talk about catching graph of derivatives later on in calculus, which we'll also discuss once we learn more about derivatives. Now in this lesson, we'll see steps to sketch the gradient function, right? That's kind of very important. So we'll just list out all the steps which one should follow to sketch the graph of a gradient. But before that, what we need to do is how do we calculate the gradient at a point? That is important. You know about it. Understand that the turning point is with a zero gradient. We need to understand how to figure out the interval of positive and negative gradient that is rate of change is increasing means positive gradient and rate of change is decreasing means negative gradient identify intervals of concavity concavity like from the graph if you see concave up and concave down these are the two concavities in concave up the gradient is always increasing and in concave down the gradient is decreasing in between we land up at a point which is called point of inflection Sometimes this point of inflection is like a settled point, but not always. That is important to remember, right? Once we know all this, we will be in a position to sketch a graph. The graph which you see on the side is set of three different graphs. They are all related. One is gradient of the other. We'll also see how to figure out from a given figure, which one is gradient of which. So the question for us to answer in today's video is this extended question, which is sketch graph of a function. I've placed it right at the end, question number 11. Graph of the function f of x is given to you, sketch the gradient g of x of f of x. So this is the function f of x, which is given to you. And we need to sketch the graph of its gradient. The steps followed will be, are also listed out here. Now that really helps because in between, I've packed up with 10 questions. As you can see, this is question number 11. And in these 10 questions to follow, we will understand all the steps which should help us to sketch the graph of the gradient, right? So steps to R, first, we need to identify the turning points, correct? Then we need to find the interval of increasing and decreasing. 
we need to find interval of concave up and concave down, identify point of inflection. Now point of inflection also provide you with maximum or minimum value of the gradient. So once you identify the point of inflection, at that point on the graph, make a tangent line, find the gradient of that tangent line, that will be either a maximum or a minimum for your graph of gradient. You need to check the end behavior to complete your graph. Sometimes it is important that you notice the symmetry. For example, in this particular graph, it has odd symmetry. So you could work with half the values, the other half will follow. If not, it's a good parameter to check it should follow, right? So let's begin with question number one. So now, Annie, are you with me? Is that all clear to you? Yes. Question number one here is only to show you how you had been calculating the gradient earlier. So, Amy, can you read this question for me? Estimate gradient of the function f of x equals 2x cubed minus 3x plus 4 um, at x equals 1. Yeah. This, you know, we are going to recall this concept. You remember how to do this question, right? Now, calculate gradient of this function with first principle. So that is also, you know, how to apply the first principle to calculate the gradient, correct? Mm -hmm. When we say estimate, then it is, you could graph it and then draw a tangent line and estimate, right? So estimates are rough estimates, but you could find fairly good value if you use the first principle, that is difference quotient formula, correct? Now, part C is explain a method to find another point on the graph with the same gradient. Now, these are the three parts of this particular question. So what we have done here is actually, I should have written that estimate gradient of this function from the graph given. So this graph of the function is given to you. That's the polynomial. Do you see this polynomial? Yeah. So once the graph is given to you, you can actually plot the uh, tangent line. And once you have the tangent line, then the slope of the tangent line at the point of interest will give you the answer. So yeah. at x equals to one, that is your x equals to one. So at this particular point, you draw a tangent line. And once you draw the tangent line, in that case, you know rise over run. So select two points and there you go. You know the tangent at a particular point, correct? So that is how you have been estimating. And also, you could use difference quotient formula to calculate, correct? You know all this. So this is kind of a review of if required. And we definitely need it because at point of inflection, you might have to draw a tangent line and find the maximum and the minimum value. Perfect? All right. Okay. Now here are these questions, as a review question to understand all the concepts. So... <clears throat> Gradient G at a point is the slope of the tangent line at that point on the graph. Correct. Can you read the question number two and answer? Right. So um, identify interval of points or points um, where gradient is positive. Yeah. Where is it? So, would it be, be between A and C? Correct. Rising. And there's also positive gradient here. A and G. Yeah. Um, where is the gradient negative? So between remaining part in the center. Yes. C and E. Yeah. Um, gradient is zero. So at the turning points. Perfect. So C and E. Good. Yeah. Um, gradient is increasing. So mm. that's where we see concave up. So that will be between A and B. Is it or gradient is increasing? So now you're right. So uh, let me just summarize this. How do you figure out whether the gradient is increasing? That is kind of rate of change is increasing. Remember, if you are sliding from a slide, when you sit on the top, at that time, your speed is zero. But when you land up at the end, you land up at a very high speed. So the gradient has increased. Do you get the idea? Oh, right. The portion of the curve, which is concave up, is basically the portion where the gradient is increasing. Do you understand? So wherever you have concave up, in those portions, the gradient is increasing. And there are these two portions 
which are concave up. You have to place your palm in the sea. If, it is, if you can hold the water in your palm, it is concave up. So that is how you're going to figure it out. So that relates to gradient is increasing. Does it make sense? Yeah. Concave up and gradient increasing. Now, gradient decreasing is like throwing a ball. So when you throw a ball, what happens? Initially, you throw it with a very high velocity, but then it reaches a peak, and during this time, it is losing its velocity, right? Yeah. It is decreasing. So wherever you find that the curve is kind of concave down, right? It's like a parabola coming down, as shown here, between B to D, right? Mm -hmm. And between this F to G, right? Between F to G. It is concave down. This was concave up till of F, right? Yeah. So those are the areas where the gradient is increasing and decreasing. And that defines the concavity for a particular graph. Correct? So when you will sketch the gradient, your gradient should go up in that interval, which corresponds to concave up on the function, right? Now let's look into the next portion, which is question number three. Can you read and answer this question? Graph of the function f of x is given below. Identify the intervals where f of x is positive and gradient is negative. Yes, tell so me. So we said uh, where f of x is positive. So that has to be everything above the x-axis. Correct. So and gradient is negative. So here, where is the gradient negative? C to D. Perfect. So that is how you have to answer these questions. Next one. Um, F of X is negative and gradient is positive. So yes. that will be everything below the X axis. And but we're looking for a positive gradient. So between F and G. So the slope is also here. See, it is positive gradient, right? Um, and you know, yeah. So the slope is positive. It may be increasing or decreasing, correct? Which is the next question. Which is the next question. Yeah, gradient is? Six. Yeah, so gradient is positive and increasing. Yeah, um, increasing means concave up and it is positive. Where? So would that be A to B? Correct, next. Um, gradient is positive and decreasing. Yes. So, B to we are C. looking for down with a negative. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. C to D, right? Yeah. Perfect. Next one. Gradient is negative and increasing. Yes. So concave up and negative. D to E. D D to F. Oh D to F. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gradient is negative and decreasing. Negative right. is concave down, right? And the slope is negative. Yeah. And then gradient is negative and decreasing. And de decreasing means concave down, right? Concave, yeah. What, uh, is it C to D? C to D, correct. So that is how you're going to answer all this. I think the concept is absolutely clear, I mean. Next one is to find maximum and minimum. And you understand maximum and minimum are at the turning points. So answer question number four. Right, so identify the point or points on the graph of f of x where gradient is maximum. So do you do, so from a to, so the gradient at a, um, I would say is positive, so plus one and then it's increasing and then when we reach around so at, at point c because it's the turning point that's zero yeah zero zero is the last one c. That's zero okay. is the last one so maximum. the maximum would be b you are right so it is maximum here right and minimum um minimum would be f so you oh oh wait wait you are right i think you're right oh. wait so now, so one change of concavity is at B. So you are changing from concave up to concave down and that gives you maximum. Is that clear to you? Mm -hmm. Now, 
when it goes from concave down to concave up. So concave down to concave up is minimum. which is your minimum. You are absolutely um, correct. Correct? Yeah. So go with concavity when you are trying to answer this question. Make a, oh, note, okay. make a note of this. So on your graph of gradient, you're going to get minimum value for D. Do you understand? Maximum yeah. value for B. And here also, you're going to get a maximum value. Do you understand? Concave the from concave yeah. up to down. So you have another maximum. Do you get the idea now? Uh, yeah. So it is kind of tricky, especially the lower half where the you know graph below the x-axis makes mm. some confusion. So now I think the concept is clear. Let's move on. Question number five. Explain the conditions when the gradient will not exist. Provide examples. Can you give me some conditions where the gradient will not exist? Um, so I do remember looking at, uh, if I remember, the absolute function graph, which yeah. is a B, because it's a corner, um, or it could be like a cusp as well. Yes. Um, the gradient will not exist because on the left hand side, the gradient will be um, less than zero. On the right hand side, the gradient's greater than zero. So there's no, um, it, it, the gradient does not exist at corners. Yes, that is correct. Any other point? Um, oh, uh, was a reciprocal graph one? Yes. So the vertical asymptotes, it doesn't exist. Because that point is not on the curve. How will you draw a tangent at that point? Correct? Uh, yeah. That's the key, right? So if I have a hole, then also there's a discontinuity. So if there is a discontinuity on the graph, you cannot draw a tangent. You cannot find the gradient. The gradient does not exist. Right? Yeah. So those could be the points. And of course, the step function is also another example. Correct? So many times you have a step function, like something like this. You see that? Oh, yeah. These corners at the end points. Also, the end points. In any graph, if I just give you a limited uh, area, then the end points, the gradient will not exist, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that brings us to critical point. So whenever you want to sketch a gradient, in that case, we need to identify critical points. Critical points are the points where the gradient is either zero or it does not exist. Reason being that at these critical points, you could actually get values like undefined, does not exist, zero, and such values which can help you graph. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. That's the whole idea. Now, read this question and answer. Question number six. So identify the true statement about maximum C and minimum E. Gradient changes from decreasing to increasing at the minimum. So we just talked about that. Yes. And that is true. Correct. That is true. Yes. Then gradient changes from increasing to decreasing at the maximum. Um, we also talked about this and we said that one's also true. Perfect. Gradient is zero at the extrema. So those would be the turning points. Correct. So that's true. Yes. Uh, so the answer is D. All of the above yes. statements are true. Perfect. Next one. Oh, uh, none of Yeah. Explain. So what is the condition that you get a maximum or a minimum at a point on the function? Um, well, I, we just said that the gradient has to be zero. One thing. Is that sufficient? Uh, well, the gradient has to be changing from uh, either increasing to decreasing or vice versa. Now look at this graph. It is very interesting. Now what I, I've drawn is a cubic function and the gradient is zero here, right? Mm -hmm. It's on the line. Does it have a maximum or a minimum? Oh, no. No. So, just gradient being zero may not be a sufficient condition, right? Oh, yeah. So, so you have to check further where, for the maximum and minimum, whether it is true or not. So we have to see the rate of change. 
Now in this particular case, which is the gradient, right? So in this particular case, what do you notice? It is gradient is positive, right? Yeah. It is, it is positive. And here also the gradient is positive. Do you see that? Yeah. The gradient did not change from positive to negative. So for a maximum, the gradient should change from positive to negative. Only then you have a maximum. Do you see that? Oh, uh, yeah. So the gradient has to change at the turning point. At turning point, it will change for sure, correct? But, but if the, if the uh, gradient is zero, right? Then you have to make another check, correct? So the so for this one, it's because it's neither maximum nor minimum. Yes. We just say it's like neither, but neither. So, so it doesn't have a maximum. So if the statement is that the gradient is zero, that means we have a maximum or a minimum. That statement is incorrect. Oh. Okay. That could be a maximum or a minimum. If it is a turning point, that is correct. But it could be a saddle point, as we have seen. Right? Do you see that saddle yeah. point? So if yeah. it's a saddle point, since the gradient is not changing on either side, on a turning point, the gradient changes, right? Oh, on either yeah, side. okay. Here it doesn't. That makes sense. That's the only difference. Is that okay? So the other yeah. way is not true. And this is a very important question from test point of view, especially in multiple choice. Now I think you'll learn most of the techniques. Let's have an experimental I mean, a simpler question to work with. We have a graph of a semicircle, and the equation you are familiar with is given to you as f of x is equal to square root of 25 minus x squared. The graph is shown as a semicircle. All values positive. It is a function. Now, tell me, how will you draw gradient of this particular function? Graph of the gradient of this particular function. Um, so can we start by just first marking the turning point at zero yes. 05? So this turning point corresponds to, let's say on a gradient, it will correspond to a point which will zero. be zero. That's correct. And then what? Um, then we can, so the two endpoints we've got as minus five and five. Yeah. We can do some vertical asymptotes. Good job. Because it does not exist, right? It's yeah. large, vertical asymptotes. Correct. So you have a zero and you have vertical asymptotes. What, what will be the next thing? Um, so, okay. So the, t uh, the end points, so we got as plus or minus five. So gradient doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, and then, so the point from zero to the, like, like the radius? Yeah, okay. Good, yeah. good. Um, that will be so that, that line would be y equals x. This one, right? So this has got yeah. one, yeah. of one. So the tangent will be minus one. Uh, I mean, in this case, since the line is decreasing, do you see that gradient is negative? Mm. Since the gradient is negative at this point and the value is negative one, you get another point corresponding to this, which will be minus one. So you have another point, correct? Oh, yeah. Oh, so then you do the same on the other side <laughs> oh, and yeah. you get plus one. So you plus put a point. One. Oh. And you know that your graph is actually going from one infinity to the other. And therefore, when you connect them like this, I mean, it's not, my screen is vertical, so it's very difficult to sketch. What you get is something like this, which is the graph of the gradient. Does it make sense? Yeah. That is how it is going to be. Okay. All right. Right, so next question is, we are given three different graphs. They're all related with gradient. So I'd like mm -hmm. you to read the question and answer this particular question. So graph of displacement, velocity, and acceleration are given below. Identify them and providing support to your answer. Yeah, and provide support to your answer. Correct. I didn't okay. hmm. um, so can we start by labeling the graphs? Okay, so, so A, a of X. C. Yeah, A is the blue graph, B is the green graph, and C is the red graph. Mm. So A of X is a quadratic. So yes. a green graph is a linear. Yes. And red graph is a cubic. Yes. Um, so 
we you said at the beginning that velocity is the rate of change of displacement correct and acceleration is the rate of change of velocity perfect um so we can see so when you look at the turning point so let's pick let's do on the cubic graph okay if you go up um we land at the point on the blue graph at zero yes um so does that show the relation between those two graphs yes that is absolutely correct both the turning points will correspond to zeros for the blue graph which is quadratic and so we can conclude that the blue graph is gradient for the red graph mm. right and if you check yeah. on the blue graph you again have a turning point and on the green that corresponds to a zero so the green graph is a derivative of the blue graph so oh, in the right. order of displacement velocity and acceleration which one is displacement which one is velocity and which one is acceleration so is uh, c of x Correct. Dis displacement yes and then a of x being velocity b of x being acceleration so b e perfect excellent now you could have concluded very easily here saying that the gradient whenever you do for polynomials decreases in one degree right so cubic mm. quadratic to linear will be an easy thing to do however in test you don't get such questions the questions will be something like this now this is like a different kind of a function altogether now the same question is there before you you need to identify which one of this graph corresponds to displacement which corresponds to velocity and which one corresponds to acceleration this graph has been picked up from questions very similar to gcse level a plus all right okay so graph of displacement velocity and acceleration are given below associate the correct order for displacement velocity and acceleration right so we can start with the same process yes yes so label the turning point on mm. a of x okay being 0 0.5 okay um and if we go down we see that it reaches yeah zero yes. so yeah yeah so there's a relation between those two perfect then we can see so if we go to the green graph go to, um, uh, continue with blue because you you identified that blue is derivative or gradient of a right okay all oh, right okay so let's do blue then yeah. um so if we start with blue it when you go up it goes to the green graph so b of x is gradient yeah. turning these are the two turning points right yeah which corresponds to zeros of the green graph. So you know now that the order is A, B, and C. Does it make sense to you? Oh, okay. So does that mean C of X is the gradient of B of X? Correct. Oh, okay. So A, B, C is the answer for you. And again, for simplicity, I just kept it both E's. Oh. Okay. So all this is absolutely clear. And now, I think uh, we did this. Okay. And now we are at our question number 11, which was the main question for this particular video. <clears throat> so you have understood all the technical terms and you know exactly how to figure out the parameters which can help sketch gradient of a function fairly accurately. Now, can you read the steps to me and then we'll follow the steps and sketch the graph of the given function? Okay. So, um, steps to sketch the <laughs> steps to sketch the gradient of f of x. Identify the turning points. Yes. So, oh, which I just read all of them and then we do. Yeah, first oh. read, then we'll do. Okay. Interval of increasing and decreasing. Interval for concave up and down. Point of inflection, maximum, minimum gradient. Check end behavior and identify symmetry. These are very important points. Make it like an mm -hmm. algorithm for sketching gradient. Is so like a, a rule? Yes, like a rule. Okay. You'll never fail if you follow this. I just quick. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I'll share the okay. video with you so you'll get all these contents. All right. Thanks. Take the next question. Now the idea is we'll now 
identify and will write down the values on the table so that those values can be plotted on the same graph connecting them we get the gradient graph does it make oh, sense okay right? so let's begin by identifying the turning points so the turning points are at c and e so i'm saying that the gradient g is zero for point c and e E and E done. Is that okay? So we got these two points there, and corresponding to these on the gradient will have zeros. Correct. Mm -hmm. Next, G is greater than zero. Means G is positive. So wherever it is increasing, we know that this part A to C, rather from A to D, the gradient. Um, I mean, sorry, the gradient positive is A to C, right? Mm -hmm. So that part will be above the line and. C to E will be below the line, X axis. Perfect? Yeah. So once you identify that, you know exactly which part comes where. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, sorry. Uh, I mean, I think uh, I, you described this point. I missed it. G approaching zero. G approaching zero is this. Gradient approaching zero is this. All right. Yeah. Right. So at the end point, we see the graph of the function is kind of flattening out right becoming mm -hmm. horizontal so those are the places where we are approaching zero do you get the idea so it's like yeah. a asymptote for the gradient also so the same horizontal asymptote the x axis will be for gradient also right so we kind of uh -huh. get our end behavior for this particular condition correct mm -hmm. now i mean about g greater than zero which is the area where gradient is greater than zero is positive. So uh, gradient is positive, we would say between, so A and C. Correct. And um, E and G. G correct. <clears throat> Other areas less. Where does we have, where do we have maximum value of the gradient? Uh, maximum value of the gradient we said was B. Okay, so now at this stage, what you have to do is when you have a proper graph paper, we are understanding the technique now. You have to draw a tangent line here, correct? Mm -hmm. so when you draw this tangent line, you can read or estimate the slope of this tangent line or the gradient, correct? So that value should fill up here. Okay. Next is minimum. Where do we have the minimum? Um, at D, point D. Negative minimum, so that value will come here, correct? Yeah, another positive value is right there, also. So we have two positive values, and that comes from the symmetry of the graph, also, correct? Mm -hmm. Right now, which portion is concave up, which is concave down? So we're looking for let's do this hand action <laughs> to yeah. remember it, and that's between A and B, right. And then, um, and then concave down is between F and G. Okay, and you missed two more portions. So concave of it is also at D to E. F. Oh, D to F. Perfect. Yeah. Yes, yes. Also, concave down is between B to D. Yes. So that is how oh, okay. you have to see all the portions. Once you identify all this, you put them in the table. So this is what we figured out. So I just placed all these values on the table. You know exactly which point of the function will be related with the gradient. And that is how they are related. Do you see the idea? Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. Values now. So you have a map to connect and get your gradient. Once you do that, I also mentioned the values for maximum and minimum. After drawing my tangent, I figured out this would be the value. Correct? This is always an STP. Oh, so do you just yeah? Sorry, do you just draw a tangent to the point of a maximum and minimum and then just yes. do rise yes. over run? Yes, rise oh, over run. Okay, Done. and then you get your maximum and minimum value. Yes. Oh. Perfect. That's cool. Yeah. So you have your zeros, you have maximum minimum, you have your end behavior. So you have your graph. And when you wow. do that, this is what you're going to get, the one in orange. Now right. you check 
check with all the parameters which we thought about. First thing to check is the maximums, right? Do you see mm -hmm. the maximums? They match? And yeah. the maximum is at D. You can match this up, correct? You can match the zeros. You can see that the zeros are matching with the turning points, right? So these are your zeros. Every turning point gives you a zero. Um, In behavior, we figured out we are approaching zero, correct? Yeah. We also know which part of the graph will be positive, which part of the graph will be negative. And all this comes together, we get the gradient graph. So it's a big exercise. But I hope you have understood the concept. What do you feel about it? It's not as bad as I thought. <laughs> Obviously, when I have the um, that table and everything, it makes everything a lot clearer to understand. So that's good. That's good. Yeah, with the gradient of the function, once you graph it, do you have to plot any of the points, like A, B? Yes. Or, oh, yeah. okay. It's good to identify the points as I did. Normally, they okay. won't give you the points. And then work out the way I worked out. So that will help you. Perfect. Now for you, exercise any. Actually, from these three graphs, I took one of these graphs. I would like you to take the example with this particular graph shown on the top. So as an exercise, you draw a function looks like this. And from this function, you may draw the gradient of this function, which will look like B, correct? Yeah. And the gradient of B should look like C. So it is a very good exercise to start with A. Right? You have your answers. So answers help. You start with A, graph it on a graph paper, and work out the values. Sketch the graph of B and then of C. And see if the strategy works. And this is one of the most difficult questions which you will encounter in uh, about the rate of change sketching gradients. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's the, the end of this particular session. Uh, we actually talked about all this. And finally, finally, we could sketch the gradient. Now, Amy, can you summarize what we learned about it? Right. Um, so the table at the end, I just want to say how that is super helpful. Like in any things when you have to graph um, gradient of a function, if yeah. you follow that format, then you won't go wrong. Yes. Um, we talked about all the steps, so um, pinpointing the turning points, um, the end behavior, the maximum minimum values, concave up, concave down. Um, right, so when, when we did at the beginning, we were talking about conditions when the gradient will, will not exist. So we talked about at corners and at cusps, um, at endpoints, um, whereas at step functions, um, reciprocal graphs as well, okay. yeah, and at holes, um, so that's all of that. And then um, when you're talking about finding the maximum and the minimum, um, don't do what I did. I was just trying to like look at randomly stuff. Like it's better to look at the concavity and see. Um, so if it goes from if the concavity changes from increasing to decreasing, you got your maximum value. If the concavity changes from decrease into increasing you got your minimum value Very. and then to find the maximum minimum value just draw a tangent to the point do rise of a run and you get your values yeah so the concavity is normally concave up or concave down so concave up is like your palm which can hold some water and concave down is the other way of the palm it's like an umbrella right so <laughs> so like yeah down, that makes right? sense like Wherever these two points meet, normally, we we'll call that as point of inflection. At the point of inflection, we expect maximum value or a minimum value of a gradient. Mm. Maximum will occur when the graph changes from concave up to down. So it was going up, it reached its maximum, and then it is coming down. Mm. It means literally. Similarly, if it is concave down to up, it was going towards the minimum value, and then it shoots up. So that is how it is. You yeah. can create even a slide with, like, you know, the shape of the slide, which is concave up. You increase your speed as you go down the mm -hmm. slide. And throwing something like a stone, it follows a parabolic path, which is concave down. 
So these could relate the two things and also whether the speed increases or decreases, correct? Mm -hmm. So on a slide, the maximum speed is when you reach at the bottom, right? I mean, it's, it's much more clearer more. when you have all these like visuals in your head. So mm -hmm. you know, because um, you're relating it to like normal day, everyday life. Correct. Yeah. So that was good, Emmy. I think you have understood all the concepts. And um, as an exercise, it'll be nice if you could do that question number 10. Yeah, definitely. Catch the three graphs. Yeah, that was really helpful, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, and that's the end of our introduction to calculus. You're ready for calculus. We'll now begin with limits and derivatives. You should sure. be very well on. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks, my pleasure. All the best and have a great day. You too. Thank you.